today we're in the beautiful capital city of Bosnia, Sarajevo, and I can't wait to see what all Trey has planned. It's been so fun getting to explore the city by ourselves, and now we're going to take you along with us. We're kicking things off by grabbing some Bosnian coffee at a really cool spot called Ministry of Chief. This is a small little shop in Old Town that has a really cool look and feel to it. Thank you very much. All right, so Bosnian coffee is traditionally served in an Ibrik mug. Supposedly you add a sugar cube to your mug, pour a little bit of the coffee over it, and wait for it to dissolve, and then add the rest of the coffee. While we're waiting, because this might take a minute, we're gonna try the Turkish delights. If you've seen the Chronicles of Narnia, the first movie, I always imagined it to be like strawberry jam wrapped in powdered sugar, so let's see. <laughs> this is watermelon, for sure. <laughs> I would compare it more to like Dots candy covered in powdered sugar. That's what this tastes like. Yeah, it does taste like a Dot covered in powdered sugar. It's good. Like Hannah said, I had this really, really high expectation from Chronicles of Narnia. And it's, it's good, but I don't think I'd be jumping into any witch's carriages to eat them. So when it's done dissolving, you pour the rest of your coffee in. It's just strong coffee. <laughs> Very strong. It has kind of like a earthy taste. It How kind of often has... do you uh, eat the earth? It's got a very earthy taste. It yeah. does! <laughs> it's definitely very strong. I get why you say earthy now. I get why you say earthy. I mean, it's good. It's not bad. It's just very, very strong, like she said. Our coffee shop's located in the center of Sarajevo's old town, which is called Biskashia. You'll find all kinds of shops, tea houses, gelato stands, and restaurants. At the center is Sebi Fountain, a pseudo-Moorish fountain that's one of the city's most recognizable symbols. It attracts people as well as pigeons, clearly, which is why it's often referred to Pigeon Square. Hello, we met some friends <laughs> from Turkey. Yes. We're so happy we love this page a lot my husband. We are always scrolling their pages <laughs> on our way to somewhere to somewhere. You okay? <laughs> oh my I think the thing that we've learned most so far since we've been in Sarajevo is that there's a massive amount of very significant and important history here. And that's not just from a national perspective, but also from an international perspective. We're heading over toward the Latin Bridge to the Museum of Sarajevo. This museum is a very notable location as it sits on the corner where Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in 1914. This event is widely considered as the moment that led tensions toward the beginning of World War I in Europe. We debated for a while whether or not to include these next stops in our vlog because they're very grim, but I feel like we'd be really doing Sarajevo a disservice if we didn't feature the things that happened here during the Bosnian War. Between 1992 and 1995, Bosnia was embroiled in a war between the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina and those of Herzeg Bosnia and the Republic of Srpska. This war was part of the breakup of Yugoslavia and was the bloodiest of the conflicts. Throughout the city, you can see that although 30 years have passed since it began, there are reminders on old buildings and on streets of what happened here. In the older buildings, there are still some bullet holes, and on the streets, there are what's called Sarajevo Roses. A Sarajevo Rose is a type of memorial in Sarajevo made from a concrete scar caused by a mortar shell's explosion that was later filled with red resin. We're going to two museums here in the center of town. The first is a museum of crimes against humanity and genocide. This museum opened in 2016 and displays the personal belongings of victims while exploring the darker history of the Bosnian War. These are all really emotional places, but I do think it's important just to show the resilience of the people here and make sure that we spread love going forward. The second museum we're visiting is the Gallery 11795. This museum highlights the Srebrenica genocide. This genocide took place in and around the town of Srebrenica in July of 1995, where over 8,000 Bosniak Muslim men and boys were killed. Yes. 
as I said, these are extremely sad and sobering museums and exhibits, but I think they're vital in order to understand the strength and resolve of the people here in Sarajevo and in Bosnia as a whole. Now we're going to move on to some beautiful parts of Sarajevo, and there is no shortage of them. The first is this church behind me. It's called Sacred Heart Cathedral, and it's the largest here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was damaged during the siege of Sarajevo, but it was not completely destroyed, and it's a very beautiful symbol of Sarajevo. So it is open, but you can't go in there with ice cream, tank tops, shorts, cameras. There's a lot of things, a lot of restrictions, but we got a nice view of the interior. So we're at a place called Chibas. It's a chicken and pasta type place here, right in one of the many squares here in Old Town. And we're just grabbing something quick. It's super, super cheap and affordable. So we're like, that's right up our alley. We figured this would be a good spot for lunch to kind of break up the first half of the day and the second half of the day. I really can't tell you how hard it's been walking through all of these streets and not shopping for everything and buying everything. Just looking at rings. <laughs> In her defense, there's some pretty incredible things on this street. I wish we had more space. From a logistical perspective, it would have made more sense to stop at Bay's Mosque when we left Old Town earlier, but I wanted to show off this mosque after the museums in order to highlight the beauty that's managed to withstand the conflicts and come out stronger. Ghazi Huzrev Beg Mosque, or Bay's Mosque, is a 16th century Ottoman mosque in Old Town and is the largest mosque in the country. Although it suffered significant damage during the war, it's been reconstructed and is seen as the most important architectural monument from the time of Ottoman rule in Bosnia and Herzegovina. One other really cool building here in Old Town Sarajevo is the Sarajevo City Hall, or Viechnica. This building dates back to 1896 when Bosnia was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It was built in a pseudo-Moorish style as a tribute to the Muslim heritage here in the city. It's functioned as a city hall, a parliament house, and during the communist period, a library. At the time, the library contained over 1.2 million books, but only 10 to 15 percent of the books were saved from the siege of Sarajevo. So our next stop is dinner, and considering that we just ate, we're going to go home and get freshened up, so the next time you'll see us, there'll be a costume change, and we'll be ready to go for dinner. It's dinner time. Let's go. Tonight we're getting dinner at Klopa which is a local place that was highly recommended on a lot of different vlogs, and it has traditional Bosnian food. The dish that we're after tonight is more of like a family style thing. It's like a platter. Hannah's been talking about it all week. I've been talking about it all week, but we hadn't been able to pull the trigger. We wanted to save it for the vlog. This is exactly what I saw online and exactly what we wanted to order. I'm so excited. One really cool thing about this place too is everything is locally sourced. So farm to table right here in front of us and I can't wait to dive in. This is incredible. Yeah. There's so much flavor in every single thing we've tried so far. And even on the salad, it's a very light vinaigrette, but it just like kicks you in the face. It's so good, so, so good. I loved specifically the skewers, the zucchini was I think the best zucchini I've ever had. There's a few dishes that he recommended that we did not get on the platter. So I think we're gonna come back tomorrow night and try a few of the dishes that he recommended. I didn't know to shoot it or sip it. So the rakia we just shared with our lovely friends from California and also our lovely, I want to call him a waiter, but he was a friend on this adventure, is more of an herb one. We've shared some with our friends in Croatia and it was definitely a lot sweeter. This was um, earthy. A lot of things have been earthy today. The cool thing about Sarajevo is that there are boatloads of coffee and tea houses throughout the city. And while we went to the Ministry of Chafe this morning, there was one more place that I really wanted to go to that I felt like we couldn't miss out on. The place we're headed to is called Sova, and we're grabbing a tea here basically because we feel like we could probably use the extra digestive health after that crazy meal. And honestly, gelato would have probably done more harm than good. I know we've talked a lot about some very sad parts of Sarajevo's history, but the only way to end this vlog is by looking toward how they've moved forward. Viechna Vatra translates to eternal flame, and it's a memorial to the military and civilian victims of the Second World War in Sarajevo. 
The memorial was dedicated on April 6th of 1946, on the first anniversary of the liberation of Sarajevo from the four-year-long occupation. In my opinion, this small memorial perfectly encapsulates the pride, strength, and perseverance of the people of Sarajevo. We can't wait to come back and see more of this city because I feel like we're just now scratching the surface. I like how they automatically give me the ice latte when in reality, Trey's the one that got the ice latte in an Ebrick mug. Not to be confused with this, what you drink out of. This is the Ebrick mug. So you add a sugar cube or two. I'm guessing it's to the line, I don't know. It tastes like a type of root. I don't know, maybe like a like a carrot that just came out of the ground or something. I don't know. I keep thinking these are Rice Krispie treats, <laughs> and I don't think they are. I'm not on a sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. For dinner next. Oh. Fun. She's a mess right now. Tonight we're getting dinner at Cop Clopa. At Copla. At we're getting dinner at Clopa. Cl no. Clopa. 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 All right. Cop Cl How is this so hard? <laughs> 